Let's solve problem 4.43 from Microelectronic Circuits 8th edition by Cedrin Smith. So we have some circuits here, and we're going to use the constant voltage drop diode model, or VD equals 0 0.7 volts, to find the value of the label voltage and current. So we always start by trying to figure out, are the diodes forward biased or reverse biased? Well, let's take a look at D2. We can see it's got two voltage supplies that it can observe, where we have this 3 volts and this negative 3 volts. And yes, there are some resistors, but I believe we can safely assume that D2 should be turned on forward biased. But what about D1? D1 is a little more tricky. We really need to figure out the voltage at this node, right? Because if this is D2, this is D1, we know that it's grounded at zero. But what is this voltage at this node? If we could figure that out, we'd have a pretty good idea. We can estimate the voltage at this node. So if I call this V1, you can say that V1 if we just follow KVL, right, you can say it's three volts minus the voltage drop across this one kilo ohm resistor. Now I'm going to ignore this diode for a moment. We have a one kilo ohm and a three kilo ohm resistor, and we have a total voltage drop across the circuit of six volts. So what I can do is take the total drop and multiply it by this one kilo ohm divided by the combination of this one kilo ohm and three kilo ohm because they are in series. So we can estimate this to be about uh, one and a half volts. So therefore D1, we would assume to be turned on. Now we can begin solving for the voltages, right? So again, that V1 was just an estimation. It's not the actual value. Because if we're trying to find the actual value, well, if we travel up from this ground and we know that D1 is turned on, therefore it experiences a voltage drop of 0 0.7 volts, V1 would equal 0 volts plus 0 0.7 volts, which is equal to 0 0.7 volts. So V1 is 0 0.7 volts, and we travel down this wire, and we cross this diode D2. That would mean V is equal to 0 0.7 volts minus the voltage drop across D2, which is 0 0.7 volts. And that's equal to 0 volts. So that's the first part of the question. V is equal to zero. But what about this current? How can we solve for that? That one's going to be a little more tricky. Well, we have this node here. And I know the voltage here is 0 0.7. So maybe we can do some KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. So if I label this current I1, and let's label the current across this wire to be I2. We know all the currents entering a node must be equal to all the currents exiting a node. So in other words, I1, because I1 is entering the node, is equal to I plus I2, because I and I2 are exiting the node. And if we just move this equation around, we would say I is equal to I1 minus I2. So now we just need to solve for I1 and I2. Okay, so I1, we can just use this nodal analysis, right? So we're going from 3 volts to 0 0.7 volts divided by the resistance, 1 kilo ohm, and that is equal to 2.3 milliamps. I2, we're going from, looks like 0 volts, yep, minus negative 3 volts. 
divided by 3 kilo ohms. That is equal to 1 milliamp. So therefore, I is equal to 2.3 milliamps minus 1 milliamp. That is equal to 1.3 milliamps. And that is the second value. Okay, let's solve for the second circuit, part B. Like always, we want to start by assuming if the valves are on or off. So for the same reason as part A, we're going to say D2 is on because it's connected from this 3 volt to negative 3 volt. And what about D1? So again, I'm going to try to calculate, estimate the voltage here at V1. So we know it's zero at the cathode, but then if we estimate V1, that would be our starting voltage, three volts, minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which would be the total voltage. So three to negative three is six volts times three kilo ohms over the series combination, three kilo ohms. And let's see what we get for that. Get negative 1.5 volts. So based on that, we're going from negative 1.5 to zero, low to high. Therefore, D2 is reverse biased, so it should be turned off. OK, let's continue. So when D1 is off, we can immediately state that the current across the diode is zero. And now we can just solve for the voltage. Mm, so let's try to solve for this current going across here. We'll just call this I2. So we can say I2 is equal to the voltage going across here. So that's three volts. Now you need to be careful because this diode experiences a voltage drop of 0 0.7 volts. You need to account for that when you're solving for your current. And then we'll just subtract negative three volts. And we're gonna divide that by the series combination of the resistors. So I get 1.325 milliamps. So now if we travel up from the circuit, we can calculate V to be negative three volts plus the voltage drop across this one kilo ohm resistor. So that would be current times resistance. So 1.325 milliamps times one kilo ohm. So I calculate V to be negative 1.675, uh, negative 1.675 volts. So we can double check our assumptions at the start. Right if I want to make sure that D1 is actually turned off. If I know that this voltage here is negative 1.675, then I just know V1 is equal to negative 1.675 plus that 0 0.7 volt drop from the diode, D2, if I'm traveling this way. And so that is equal to, mm, negative 0 0.925 volts, I believe. Let me check with my calculator. <laughs> it's negative 9 point, 0 0.975. There we go. So sure enough, that means the diode is experiencing negative 0 0.975 volts here and zero volts at the cathode for D1. So this confirms D1 is in fact off, and these are our final answers.
that is a problem.